I'm John Bond. Welcome to Move Yourself Happy. Made for fitness enthusiasts who want to make their passion their profession. Are you unhappy in your present job? Are you passionate about health and fitness? Do you want to release your true potential? If the answer is yes, this podcast is for you. I will be teaching you the specific knowledge that every trainer and coach needs to be successful. So listen closely as I share my expertise with you. So just like me, you can love what you do. Lewis, good to have you on, mate. Thank you for coming. Uh-huh. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Obviously, we see each other a lot anyway. Uh, every now and then when I'm down at South Coast, you're there. Mm-hmm. Um, but you qualified, so we've just been talking off camera, but you mm. qualified back in 2017 as a PT. Yeah. yeah. So tell us what you've been up to since then. Um, started off as doing uh, PT in one-to-one. Uh, I've worked doing classes. Uh, which wasn't really my thing. <laughs> I, I did it, I enjoyed it at the time, but I pre- always prefer one-to-one. And done one-to-one for several years, and then I got into online coaching and also into bodybuilding. So, yeah, my uh, my career has shifted. You know, my, my style has shifted as well from when I first started. Um, so, yeah, I've been, been in the industry for a while now and just, you know, learning still. You, know, you never stop learning, do you? No, you don't. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it. Just been plugging away, yeah, learning and uh, transforming others and myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see. <laughs> Seeing the gradual transition because I only see you every few weeks mm. uh, and sometimes longer, I suppose. Uh, it's not like I see you every day. I'll be like, I can noticeably see the change. Yeah, you know, and it and it will be when I see it, it's it will be kilos of muscle <laughs> that I'll see yeah. different every t- each time I see you so it's, oh, yeah. that's good <laughs> yeah it's good to see <laughs> it's working then <laughs> yeah um so yeah so you you basically once you qualified with us in 2017 mm. you've tried a few things and this is very common isn't it people mm. qualify you don't really know straight away exactly well some people do actually so we get more and more people start that have a very clear objective or goal mm. about what they want to do um but um most people generalise before they then start to specialise. So are you now sort of specialising in the whole body composition changing? Is that what your clients are after? Yeah, yeah. It's like you said, it took me a little while to find my niche. Um, but I fell in love with body transformations um, and, and getting real results, you know. Um, and that, that's what I do now and that's what I'm best at. So and that's what I s- stuck to over mm. the last few years. And being a bodybuilder as well is goes hand in hand because bodybuilding is body transformation. You know, you go from a bulk to a cut to a cut to a bulk and, you know, that's how you um, start transforming your body, gaining more muscle um, and looking different each time, you know. And that's what I love. I love, to, I love to see the body just transform and how someone can, you know, a few months down the line look completely different from what they did when they first started. Mm. So that really... Yeah, it really gets me me going, gets my interest up. Yeah. So what sparked that interest for you originally? Was it was there a particular, you know, like for me, example, I, mm. I, I've i always had a, a an interest in that type of thing from a very young age, but it would have been from watching the action movies with mm. Arnie, Stallone, <laughs> Van Damme, you know, Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. And rightly or wrongly, as a young, impressionable male, I'll be thinking... That's what a real man's meant to look like. So but it's always in the back of my mind that I need to build some muscle. I need mm. to keep some muscle. And um, what was it for you that inspired you? Well, I've always admired a great physique. You know, Arnold, uh, Lou Ferringo, and I. <laughs> the thing, the the main thing for me was undergoing my own uh, transformation, where I got to a point in my life where I was overweight. I'm not the tallest guy in the world, um, and for for my height at the time. Yeah, I was uh, I was very overweight, and um, I just wanted to change the, the the way I looked, and I slugged away for seven months in a gym uh, by myself. I didn't I didn't hire anyone, and um, possibly didn't do things the the right way. Um, but I I managed to lose thirty kilos in that time, 
And wow. that, to me, was uh, an epiphany moment. You know? So was this around the time that you actually did your training with us? Be- yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. It was, and that was another reason, you know, that I, I wanted to get into shape quick, you know, because no one's going to want to take advice from an overweight PT, are they? So, um, yeah, that, that really was one of the main reasons as well that I needed to sort myself out. And ever since then, i done it for myself, so... I wanted to help other people because mm. the, the the feeling that you get from you know going from being overweight to being in shape is is priceless you know so yeah and then from there I tried a few things you know I, I wanted to to find my way I tried boxing I did a bit of boxing I did um, uh, white collar fight mm, I didn't um, know that yeah that 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 went well I didn't lose <laughs> well I lost on points but I didn't get knocked out. Um, and then I tried same experience. <laughs> I did one too. I didn't yeah. get. I didn't win, but I didn't get knocked out. So that. For me oh was, really? Yeah, yeah. So that for me was a win as well. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good night, wasn't it? it was not it? Oh, it's a fantastic. Great night. Yeah. And the training as well. It's uh, it's something that you can keep for life. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's um, brilliant. So and then after that, I did the Spartan race. Um, never again. <laughs> it, was just, it was too much. It's on me. Netflix now. That's huge. That company. Uh, yeah, as a, as a documentary. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever done, hands down. Um, and then after that, I was looking for my next challenge. You know, being a personal trainer, I always, me, myself, I always wanted to keep challenging myself. So I decided to uh, do bodybuilding and I wanted to compete, to, to step on stage and, and find out how that feels. And <laughs> that was five years ago and I haven't looked back since, you know. Um, started off um, dieting down. Well, I started off doing a bulk actually because I was already. I had done already a photo shoot by myself. I got myself uh, lean for my first ever photo shoot, and then after that, I started to do a bulk with. I got myself a coach as well, um, and then yeah, just started the bulk, and then a year later, started cutting down for my first show, and then COVID hit, <laughs> oh, no, and then just yeah. for a spanner in the works. So. Um, yeah, there was a lot of training at home. Um, just pure dedication. I was so hungry for it. I, I just, there was nothing going to stop me, not even COVID. So I got kit for home and then done my most of my prep at home and then COVID sort of eased off and then finished off my prep and um, yeah, stepped on stage for the first time in 20, uh, uh, towards the end of 2019. No, no, 2021, sorry, not 2019. Um, yeah, 2021. And that was, uh, that was an experience. And then, I just loved it. I loved the commitment. I loved the discipline. And, you know, it just kept me grounded. Mm. And then I wanted to go again because I got invited to the finals. I came second on my first ever show. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So I got an invite. Because I always think, a bit like with the um, the white collar stuff, and mm. that, some people listening might think, oh, that sounds cheesy. But I always think like the white collar, just getting in that ring, you've already won in a way because you're doing something that most people yeah. would never do. You'd, mm. you'd be too scared to do it. And it is scary, isn't it, doing that stuff? And I always think the same with you guys when you get on stage. Mm. So by the time you get there, like everyone kind of look, everyone looks good, don't they? Mm. <laughs> you look them all up, and you're like, mm. you're all, they all look good. They all deserve to be on that stage, mm. and so they they kind of won. So that to then come second out of all those people that yeah. are already a success and already achieved something really impressive to come second on your first show that is really impressive. Yeah, I was blown. I, I was not expecting that at all. I just went there. Um, for the experience, mm. you know, and there's a lot of work that goes into it behind closed doors that not everyone knows about is the hours of posing, hours of cardio and the dieting, you know, because no one's forcing you to do it. Mm. It's all a mindset game. Um, be- yeah, because no one's pointing a gun at you and telling you you can't eat a piece of cake. If you if you really wanted it, you could eat it, but you have to um, have a strong mindset for it. And oh, for that's sure. what a lot of people would struggle with. And that's why they say bodybuilding is not for everyone. Um, but the results that you get, uh, <laughs> you would never look like that, you know, if you didn't put in the work, you know. So to me, it was an achievement in itself that I got myself to that kind of level of conditioning mm. um, for, for a first time. And my posing, I just loved it. I love the routine. I love... You know, um, learning how to do different poses to, you know, showcase all my hard work. And as I said, I was not expecting to come second. Um, no, yeah, I, I surely was <laughs> gobsmacked. <laughs> yeah. But then I went to the finals and it was just like, yeah, I, I knew I needed to put in more work um, because the, 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 
the level of um, physiques that were at the finals, you can only imagine, you know, who was just it was some of the best in the country. So, but it was an experience nevertheless and uh, kept me fired up. Oh, definitely. If you're looking for a challenge, something that's going to test your tenacity mm. and your, yeah, discipline is a good word. Um, bodybuilding's definitely up there, isn't it? Mm. We had um, a guest on the other week, Dean Hammond. He did his training for Storm Fitness Academy. And he, I mean, he's an ex-premiership football player, so mm. he's kind of competed at a, a very high level. And one of the things he said that what interested him in, in training to be at Storm Fitness Academy is having that discipline back in his life again. Mm. Like a reason to get up, go along. And he said, you know, burying his head in the books, doing the training, doing the learning. He wanted that, that routine, so he thrived off it. You know, and it's quite common when people retire from professional sport, they do miss that, they miss that discipline. And you obviously crave on the discipline mm. side of things as well. Yeah. Motivates you a lot. Yeah. It just keeps me in a, in a straight and arrow, you know? Mm. Because it's very easy to um, be a, a, a personal trainer on paper, but, you know, getting clients to do as they're told and you know not as you do you know <laughs> so um yeah definitely for me it worked really well with my line, line of work it just goes hand in hand really and there's a lot to be learned from bodybuilding as well that you know you can i can implement into my clients training and um you know the diet the training um it, yeah it all goes hand in hand really yeah okay so let's get on to that then because i know and um, there are going to be people that are listening and going john you've got this uh you know, this hench dude on your show. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Get some, <laughs> get some tips off him. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking about it for myself mm-hmm. as well. <laughs> um, and, I, you know, it'd be interesting to share some, some of the things that I've struggled with, you know, what, what, what advice you might have for that. For that. But um, So you mentioned about mindset being important. Mm. Obviously, we've got nutrition and we've got training. I mean, there are other avenues. We can talk about sleep and everything else. But yeah. if you were to just take those three alone, nutrition, training um, and mindset, Mm-hmm. If you were to give a percentage to each one of those as to their importance, what would you give? Uh, nutrition would be 50%. Mindset, I would say 40%. And then training 10%. <laughs> wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. What, a, what a great answer. Okay, uh, so let's, let's go there then. So talk us through um, the sort of, um, if you were to summarise your advice that you're going to give to somebody on the nutrition aspect of it. Mm. What would you say? Um, depends what they're trying to do. You know, uh, you have to align your nutrition with your goals. You know, so you, you're not going to achieve great results if you're eating takeaways every night. You know, uh, but saying that, if you're a strong man, you, <laughs> your your type of nutrition is going to be the high end calories. You know, mm. and you can pretty much eat what you want because that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to gain sizing strength and not so much from an aesthetic point mm. but if you're trying to bodybuild then you are, what i do with clients uh, while we're on this conversation what i do with clients so a client comes to me and they've never done a diet before they've never competed before so they don't know what a prep feels like so what i say to them is do a photo shoot first do a photo shoot prep first diet down um and then see how you feel because so don't, don't build first cut first Cut first, depending on how they look, though. Mm. Uh, if they are um, holding a little bit more body fat, then, yeah, they cut first. Or if they're in pretty good shape, pretty lean, then you can start them off straight away on, on the bulk, um, pushing food up slowly. But if you're someone that has never competed before and you've never dieted down to those kind of levels before, I definitely recommend do a photo shoot first um, and then see how you feel because it's going from one extreme to another is not always conducive of good results. You know, I've had people that wanted to compete, they dieted down and they couldn't get past like eight weeks of dieting mm. because it's hard, yeah. Um, and then in, if, if, if you're gem pop, that you're just trying to lose a little bit of weight, um, you don't have to cut down to ridiculous amounts of, of calories, like of really harsh deficits where you see a lot of people do. They will go from eating what they want to then eating fifteen hundred calories a day, and that's not going to last. Mm. It's got to be sustainable, right? Um, so yeah, all my advice, uh, a long short, <laughs> mm-hmm. is just align your um, nutrition to what your goals are, um, and don't go from one extreme to another. No, okay. And do you still go with the you know the sort of tried and tested method of if you're wanting to cut body fat, you need a deficit. 
Mm. If you want to gain muscle mass, you need a surplus, a calorie surplus. 100%, yeah. Uh, it's calories in, calories out at the end of the day. You know, not, nothing changes. Um, so, yeah, just stick to those um, th those basics, you know. If you're trying to lose weight, calorie deficit. If you're trying to gain weight, calorie surplus. If you're trying to maintain and just, you know, prod along, maintenance levels. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And my experience working with myself at working with clients as well is the more dramatic the deficit, I mean, so the research shows if it's greater than 1,000 calories mm. a day anyway, it's unlikely it's just going to come from fat. It's mm -hmm. probably going to be some muscle mass, etc. that you're losing. Um, but the, the, the greater the deficit, there's always the greater risk that it isn't going to be just fat. Mm. Um, but also, generally, the more people will struggle with, with it, generally. Yeah. Is that, would you say that's the experience that you've had? If yeah. The deficit's too good, too yeah. big, sorry. Yeah, big. yeah, 100%, yeah. And as I said, you know, people go from zero to 100 uh, really quick. You know, they, they want to lose weight and they will take drastic measures, you know, because they want to lose weight quick. Mm. And a lot of people in, you know, over the years I've been in the industry, people want to lose weight. They got a holiday in June and they want to start dieting in at like May, you know, and then they've got to lose 10 kilos of body fat. It's just not going to happen. It's, mm. it's not enough time, you know, because the, the body is funny. The body won't just won't let you lose weight like that. You, you know, you can take two weeks for a body to respond to a calorie deficit. You know? Yeah, it is. So, yeah, it's, I mean, there's so much that science doesn't understand yet. Yeah, it, it doesn't really ex explain that. We have theories to explain that, mm. but you're right. It is. It's not. It's not linear, is it? When yeah. you're doing this stuff, it's no. always like up and down. Right? And that's where people um, get disappointed and disheartened. Mm. Um, they don't lose the five kilos of body fat they want to lose in two weeks, and they, you know, they work hard. Don't get me wrong. People will work hard to shed weight, but they're not doing it the right way. You know, sometimes they're doing too much. Mm. And this is what people can't get their head around. How am I doing too much? Well, your body needs to rest. It needs to recover. So smashing the gym for six days a week and eating a 1,500 calorie deficit, it's not going to always give you the results that you want. Let's just say it. Yeah, it's like that old expression, isn't it? People, until people are, are sick and tired of being sick and tired, that's, mm. not, that's, not, that's when they will take action. But the problem is by that point, often they're so sick of what they see reflecting mm. back at them in the mirror or what they see in a photo that they're like, I've got to lose it now, exactly what you said. I've got to lose yeah. 10 kilos in the next month or whatever. Yeah. And for anyone listening that is basically saying, well, you know, well, I've got a friend, um, Sophie, she, she, she did this diet and she lost five pounds in the first week. She lost four pounds in the second week. That'll be That's, water. It'll be water, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is another thing that people don't realise is that the initial drop that you get on the scales from starting any sort of deficit will be water weight. Mm. You know, you don't just drop fat overnight. But you can drop water, depending on how um, how many carbs you had the day before, how much water you've had the day before. You know, it, it's all dependent on that. And you, your weight will fluctuate a lot. It won't be fat. It mm. will be water. Yeah, I mean, it fluctuate a couple of kilos in one day, can't mm. it? Because you normally wake, wake up lighter because of mm. sweating and breathing mm. out water in the night. Mm. Um, but then by the evening, <laughs> where you've been eating all day and hydrating, yeah. etc., you're... You're always a lot heavier, aren't you? Yeah, so. and don't ever get on the scales at the end of the day. This is what I say to clients <laughs> as well, because it can be uh, disheartening. Yeah, I've had clients that weigh themselves after they've, they've had two meals. Um, and I always say, look, the best time of the day for you to weigh yourself is in the morning when you're fasted. It's going to be the most accurate weight that you will get. Mm. Not after you've had breakfast or uh, a litre of water. As soon as you wake up, just weigh yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's a good shout. Mm. Yeah, getting into the same sort of routine of doing that. Mm. I used to think it was a bit obsessive to weigh daily, but I've changed my mind on that over the years. Mm. It just helps you stay on top of things, doesn't it? Because even though weight fluctuates, mm. if if one day you get on those scales and you're like, Jesus, that's 10 kilos heavier mm. than what I consistently am at, yeah. then you know that's not just a fluctuation. Yeah. <laughs> you are 10 kilos heavier. Um, so you kind of want to nip, you know, nip that in the bud early, really, don't you? Because mm. it is so, it, it's not easy losing weight, is it? Body no. fat is not easy. No. So the prevention is better than cure, really, isn't it? I would say for some, most people, weighing yourself every day would actually open up your mind a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, unless you have mental health uh, problems, or, you know, <clears throat> weighing yourself every day isn't going to be optimal. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Um, but... 
if you're someone that is new, new to losing weight and you haven't got um, a, a mental health um, problem with you know losing weight or eating or eating disorders or anything like that, weighing yourself every day will open your eyes because you'll be able to tell, right, if I drink X amount of water today, um, I'm not going to be um, holding as much water tonight because the more water you drink, the more water you flush out, yeah? But if you drink less water, your body's going to hold on to more water and then the day after that, you're going to be heavier, mm. right? So that, that there's a little bit of science there. Definitely, yeah. Um, and also uh, consumption of carbohydrates, yeah? Or uh, high calorific foods. You're always going to weigh more. For example, let's say you went out one night and you had a burger and chips and a couple of beers. Next day you weigh yourself, you could weigh two kilos. Heavier than you were the day before that, mm. you know? And that would just be because of you having that, I call it off-plan meal. <laughs> <laughs> off-plan, yeah. And it depends what your plan is. Never in the plan, that is it. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, there, there, there is that. There's where people get caught out and um, they get caught up, sorry, uh, in, in on the scales is because they they will be heavier the day after they've done something that they like the night before they went out and had a dinner out or something and mm. then check-in day the next day, they weigh themselves like, oh my God, I've put on two kilos. It's not fat. No, no, there's so much misinterpretations, isn't there? Because like carb- like glycogen that we store on our muscles mm. is basically sugar and water. So, mm. so, you know, it's the combination there. So there's a large part of that is water. Mm. And that's good. We need to have glycogen in our muscles because we need mm. it for energy. Mm. So when people are doing these drastic, drastic weight loss procedures or whatever, mm. they're depleting their muscles of glycogen. Mm-hmm. So on the scales, they're looking much lighter. Mm. Um, but actually, they're just, it's like they ditch their energy stores yeah. so things are going to be harder as well mm. um but i guess for anyone listening well, i suppose we need to make it clear as well that the, the scales don't necessarily tell the whole story do they no there's, there's, it's not a be all end all no it's no. um we have to remember it for its limitations i suppose mm. because you can you know you can you could stay the same weight across a 10-year period but you your body could recomposition couldn't it mm-hmm. as to how much of that is fat and how much of that is muscle yeah yeah and if you train as well, there, 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 there is a misconception of uh, inflammation from training as well. Um, because when you train, you're inflaming your body with, you know, adding stress to the muscles. So you could be weighing more because of that as well, you know. Yeah, if you have a heavy leg day and then you weigh yourself the next day, you're holding inflammation on your legs from the training session from the day before. So essentially you could be weighing a little bit more, you know? Mm. So there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of things that get um, overlooked when it comes to jumping on the scales, you know? Mm. That's what I say to clients, don't ever fixate on the, on the scales because they don't tell the whole pic, the, the whole story, no. you know? Um, when clients are losing weight, I say, look, how does your clothes feel? I know the scales are saying, that your weight hasn't dropped, but how, how does your clothes feel, you know? And oh yeah, they're feeling, my jeans are feeling a little bit looser. Well, that's an indication that you, you're you losing weight, you know? So yeah, <laughs> if we could just ditch the scales forever and use something else, that would be great, wouldn't it, you know? <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice if, um, have you ever seen that film Elysium? Where, um, uh, yeah, with, um, I forgot his name now. But Matt yeah. Damon. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and you know that he lies in, I think it's an like MRI scanner, isn't it? Mm. It kind of says, you know, cancer detected. No, it's yeah. not him, but it's somebody lies in it, cancer detected, and it's like, Geez, cancer eliminated. Yeah. It'd be kind of good if part of that process, it also said, you know, mm. this is your muscle mass, this is your... Thing, you know, and and then yeah. and then gave you the the, the advice. It said, "Oh, you know, you're yeah. you're in danger of increasing your fat stores by an additional one kilo." A judge yeah. based on the last two days of behaviours, <laughs> yeah. we yeah. recommend you amend that. You know, moving forwards yeah. or something. So, that, yeah. no, no doubt that will be yes. the future. Yeah, it? yeah. Although, will we be needed if that happens? <laughs> yeah, we, we might be out of a job by then. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the ones advising them what to program the machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be adjusting variables. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, we'll we'll be training up a. Ele- I was going to say Alexa, but that's right. I've turned her off. Oh, she's, right. she's she's good. <laughs> Alexa and Siri. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. That's really interesting. Really helpful. So yeah, aligning your goals with your your mm. nutrition. Mm-hmm. So if somebody's goal is, and actually, whether somebody wants to lose weight or gain weight we're always talking about if it's gaining weight it's generally is muscle mass that people want to gain isn't it yeah i don't yeah. I've, I've actually never met anyone that says i do want to increase my fat stores i'm sure there is people out there but i've never met anyone mm. um and you know 
if we're talking about people with eating disorders, they will have an unhealthy level of body fat. Mm -hmm. I don't work with people with uh, eating disorders, so I've mm -hmm. never had to, to do that. But generally, the people that come to us, mm -hmm. they want to, if they want to increase mass, it's more muscle. Mm -hmm. If they want to induce weight, it's losing body fat. Mm -hmm. So if it's increasing muscle, mm -hmm. what are some good sort of tips for nutrition for that? Um, carbs. <laughs> Well, that's, I, so that's not the obvious answer, is it? So people listening are going, oh, you start with carbs. <laughs> no, you just go on a caloric surplus, yeah. Um, and you have to do it gradually. Uh, power shoveling food down you isn't going to, you know, get you the best results. You know, you have to assess where your maintenance calories are and then go above that by 500 calories, okay? Um, and you need to do that gradually. You don't just up your calories every week. Okay, because mm -hmm. people do that as well. They will just go, oh, I've upped my calories this week. My weight hasn't gone up, so I'm going to up them again. Give your body a chance to adapt. Mm, and yeah, good go, advice. It, every two weeks, I would say, reassess and, you know, go up a little bit more. Um, but don't, the, the, the initial bump up, do a, do a 500 calorie bump up. The second bump up, do a 200 calorie bump up, you know. Don't always increase it by the 500s, mm. yeah. Uh, because, like I said, you need to give your body a chance to adapt. Yeah, that's really good advice, because otherwise you literally are gonna go up and down and up yeah, and down, aren't yeah. you? Just being too reactive to everything that, that those mm. scales tell you. Yeah. Um, that's great. So yeah, so straight in there with carbs, because normally the, the go-to answer, isn't it? The, t the typical answer is sort of, protein, you gotta yeah. get your protein yeah. in there. Well, people, kind of people are scared of carbs. Mm -hmm. Nowadays you've got so much information out there that it's kind of slating carbs a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and people are shying away from carbs. You know, I've, I talk to a lot of coaches and a lot of PTs on, on social media and um, we're kind of like a, a, a little network in yeah. way of people and you know, we, we discuss things and share ideas and stuff. And the amount of personal trainers that I've spoken to, especially newcomers, they are shying away from carbs. And it seems to be a lot of ladies, you know. Um, they, they wanna grow their glutes, they wanna grow their legs, but they don't want to eat carbs. So I'm like, okay, so how are you growing your muscle then? Oh, uh, fats and protein. Okay, it's not, um, it's not impossible. You can do that, mm. um, but you're gonna get a lot better results with glycogen because your muscles are full of glycogen, mm. yeah? For repair and growth, yeah? And fuel, a fuel source, you know? Um, so yeah, it's a lot of people are scared of eating carbs nowadays, mm. um, and you don't have to always eat uh, processed carbs. You know, you can eat fructose. You know, carbs from sh fruit sugars, um, natural sugars like honey. You know, you can put that on your oats before you um, train as well, and after training. Yeah. Mm. So there's that window where your body, after before training and after training, that your body's going to need to utilize glycogen for fuel and for recovery, so. And it spares as well the mm, protein, doesn't it? Mm. Because if you're not getting enough carbohydrates in, mm. your protein that you might have used for rebuilding and repair yeah. is gonna get used for fuel. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there, there's gotta be a balance there, for sure. Um, I'm a great adv advocate of a, a balanced nutrition, you know? Yeah, that's um, great. I, I don't cut out carbs, I don't cut out fats. Um, certainly don't cut out protein. <laughs> a lot of people struggle to eat protein as well. Um, enough of it, you know. That's really good to hear, Lewis, because um, essentially that is what you are taught as part of a mm. PT course. And what often people do is when they qualify, mm. and don't get me wrong, like there are aspects of the syllabus over the years that I've questioned, because we don't write the syllabus, we have awarding bodies, they wrote the syllabus. But generally, it's, generally it's, it's based on science, it's, mm. it's good stuff. But there's stuff, you know, you might question. But mm. actually, what you're talking about there is what you're taught to do. Mm. And so many trainers, they qualify and they go, right, now I'm going to go and do it my way. Mm. A bit like when we pass the driving test mm. and you get taught, don't you, a certain yeah. way when you drive and you pass your test and you kind of let some of that go a little bit. A lot of trainers will deviate and do, their, do it their way. But what you're talking about there, balanced nutrition. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that balancing your macronutrients, your fats, your carbs, your proteins, we basically all do that. But if you're trying to build mass... Just up the calories. Yeah, yeah. And you want a higher amount of carbohydrates than um, protein because you've got to think about your digestive system as well. If you're 
pushing carbohydrates really high and then you're pushing the protein really high, your digestive system isn't going to be able to cope with that. Yeah, so you have to bring one down and push one up. Mm. Same goes when you're on a calorie deficit. You bring carbohydrates down and you push protein up. Because right. protein is the most thermogenic uh, macronutrient there is. Your body, your body uses up more calories to break down protein than any other macronutrient. Mm. And also, for every gram of carbs that you eat, you hold three grams of water. So when you're in a calorie deficit, protein goes up, carb, carb comes down, and fats stays moderate. Fats always stay moderate, yeah, because... Not unless you're prepping for a show, then your fats will be down in the dumps. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, always, always moderate with the fats. And people are scared of fats because of the word fats. Yeah. Fats don't make you fat. Carbs don't make you fat. Protein don't make you fat. Over consumption of calories and not moving enough, that's what makes you fat. Perfect, love that. Yeah, that's a really good message to get across to people. Mm. Start demonizing certain macronutrients, yeah. don't they? And it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it is crazy, really. Um, it's nice that... Um, a lot of the stuff that's out there that's confusing people and is a myth that you're basically clearing it all up in this in this this mm. episode. So that's great. Um, so yeah, we got so we've got the carbohydrates. Um, is there anything you you could tell us about protein? What would your recommendations be if somebody's going to? There's a lot of um, there's a lot of stipulation about protein as well. Um, consumption of protein. People will opt for natural sources of protein. Uh, which is great, and you should. But also, I don't agree with people demonizing protein supplements because if you are doing a bulk um, in your caloric surplus, you're not going to want to eat tons of chicken breast every day, and you're going to need some sort of supplementation for that bulk. You know, So that's where whey protein comes in. Yes, it's synthesized. Yes, it's made in a factory, but it's still protein. Yeah, so I opt for a small percentage of protein powder myself. I don't, you know, I don't have protein powder with every meal, mm. but a small amount like for my pre and post workout where protein needs to be readily available for my fuel, which is my pre and readily available for my recovery, for my post. And it's easy to digest. It has digestive enzymes in it. So I keep protein powder for that first meal before training and um, my meal after training and then the rest of my day i i will opt for uh fish chicken uh mince beef at night you know steak so protein sources yeah keep about 90 percent of your diet with natural sources um oh the other one um that people get confused about is eggs now eggs are not high in protein they're, they're quite a balance between fats and protein. Right. You know, so when people say to me, oh, yeah, I've had six eggs for breakfast, I'm like, wow, okay, so you must have had about 40 grams of fats yeah, in that breakfast. Yeah, okay. You know? So that's upsetting the balance. Yeah. Because it's actually not a balance, it's yeah. heavy on the fat side. Yeah, and the fact that it would be uh, making you a bit constipated as well <laughs> over a period of time. <laughs> that's a good um, point. So, you know, um, protein, yeah, natural sources for sure, about 90%, but don't. Don't shy away from uh, whey protein because it, it does come in handy um, and it just breaks it up a little bit for you as well. Yeah, yeah, that's really good advice. Um, so I, um, I don't know if I've had this conversation with you, but about 18 months ago, um, I actually went vegan. So mm-hmm. I've, uh, and, I, and I did, um, I was almost a bit um, resistant to the whole sort of protein thing because mm-hmm. um, I know there's a lot of a myths associated with the idea that mm-hmm. you can't get protein unless you're eating meat anyway. Mm. So I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just mm. going to go vegan. And I, I kind of did it for moral reasons mm-hmm. anyway. It was nothing to do with the health or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I've got a confession because I, I was like, I'm not going to trap my protein. I'm not going to mm-hmm. worry about it. I'm just going to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Uh, 18 months in, uh, I have been struggling with uh, energy. I mean, it hasn't stopped me. I'm still mm-hmm. doing everything that I, that I uh, do. But I have struggled with my energy a bit and I have mm. struggled with the muscle building and mm. I've not struggled with the fat gaining. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, so what I have done the last few weeks, I decided I need to do something about this protein thing and also the B12 thing. Because mm. although um, my cholesterol has dropped, by the way, so I've, there's been so many good health benefits from yeah. doing it, my cholesterol's dropped. Yeah. Um, so the last few weeks, I've started taking B12 as a vitamin, and I've actually started tracking my protein again. Mm-hmm. And the although I can do it from natural sources, it is harder. So I bought myself a, a 
pea protein. Yeah. And um, so I've been having, I've actually doubled my protein intake mm -hmm. um, since introducing the pea protein and, mm -hmm. and some other things. And already I'm feeling better. Now, somebody might say, well, that's, um, that's probably placebo because you're having something. Um, but I am. I've, my, my energy levels are coming back. I'm mm -hmm. enjoying my resistance training more. So just from my own personal point of view, anyone listening who uh, does transition over to, to vegan sources, mm -hmm. I agree. You, a bit of supplementation, yeah. it definitely helps. Just That's having right. that banging back that pea protein mm -hmm. is, is made my life so much easier. Because I can still eat the way I've been eating, mm -hmm. but now I've got more protein coming in. So yeah. that, that, that's helped massively. Yeah. You know, in an ideal world, yeah, we'd do everything naturally, wouldn't we? But, um, and also what we have to remember is what you do, and what, even what I do, is above and beyond what the average person is doing or even needs to do. You're building considerable bulk, can't mm -hmm. you? Um, so we, we do need a bit more, don't we, than what we can just get from the supermarket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, a, a small percentage of your, your protein intake, it can come from supplement. Yeah, um, the protein shakes are there. As the word says it itself, supplement. Yeah, it's not a meal. <laughs> this is where people get caught up and they're like, "Oh yeah, I've had a protein shake today uh, with every meal." We, not really the best. <laughs> yeah, you you need to have some sort of natural protein sources as well. Mm. Yeah, um, but yeah, I don't demonize it. You know, um, whether you're vegan or or not. You know, you need a little bit of supplementation in there, mm. um, especially if you're bulking. Yeah. Okay, that's great. That's really helpful. And um, so then if somebody's cutting, is it simply a case of... Oh, sorry, I'll tell you what I did, man. But you sort of answered this, actually. Mm. I'm getting the impression then you're not a fan of the dirty bulk. No. 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 You, <laughs> you can't out-train a bad diet. You just can't. <laughs> no. You know. Um, there's a lot... Of, uh, dirty bulk is fun. I've done it in the past. Uh, but it, 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 it didn't give me the best results, you know. Um, this bulk that I've done now... I done a photo shoot last year, and I transitioned into a bulk, ready uh, for uh, me to compete this year. My last push before competition, and I have held the best shape uh, I've, I've held in in years after a bulk. So, and that was just because I stayed away from all the crap. You know, after a photo shoot, all you want to do is eat crap for weeks <laughs> because you've dieted down. Mm. for such a long time and you haven't eaten anything flavoursome you know for s such a long time and then all you want to do is, is pig out yeah and I've done that consecutively uh, over the over the years of you know cutting and bulking and competing and it just didn't give you the, it didn't give me the best results now a dirty bulk uh, is I would not advise it because once you acquire too much body fat your body cannot partition nutrients efficiently it just can't and you're just wasting your time, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so have nice food, by all means. You know, have a burger here and there once a week or twice a week. Um, but don't consist your diet on just pizza and KFC and McDonald's <laughs> while you're in the bulk. I know it tastes good, but it's not going to be what your body needs. You're almost uh, delaying your um, sort of, uh, what's it, delaying that, that gratification because you're... Um, or not, sorry, delaying gratification because you're going, oh, well, I can, I'll enjoy this period, but then that period that's coming, <laughs> the cutting period, is going to be so much more miserable, isn't it? Because you've just been going, A hundred percent. And I, this is good because you've just brought back some memories of me <laughs> <laughs> slugging away on the, on the Stairmaster because I've, you know, had to shift 18 kilos, mm. you know, to get ready for a competition. Um, yeah, what goes up must come down. And trust me, getting the food in is a lot more fun than getting it off. Yeah. Yeah, getting the calories off is not fun at all. Um, so this time around, I am excited about my prep because I am only eight kilos to nine kilos up right. from my um, last lean weight, which was for my photo shoot last year. So I was 70, 70 kilos lean. And now I am 88, 89 fluctuating. Right, okay. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. I'm 89. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the conversation is slightly different. <laughs> Let's not go yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you you yeah. guys, if you're watching this, you can just see what I'm talking about. In fact, I'm going to sit up a bit straighter because yeah. you're, 
you mate, you're shaming me there, a little bit. <laughs> I'm probably, I looked at one of mine the other day, the, yeah. the interview I was having, and I was thinking, John, you really should have sat, sat up straight, pulled that tummy in, shoulders <laughs> back, chest out. Um, <laughs> Um, this feels like a really good time to then move on to the mindset side of it mm. because you're talking about how like the cutting side of it is hard and everything else and mm. and that actually yeah if you do do that that dirty bulk mm. um, it, 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 it plays with your head a bit doesn't it mm. so how do you manage your own headspace and then what do you advise your clients when managing their headspace because it it can be all-consuming sometimes, the whole diet thing, can't it? Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people struggle, I'm not going to lie. Um, especially when it's um, a diet that they're trying to do for a photo shoot uh, or a competition. Um, but when it comes to like lifestyle clients, I give them a little bit of leeway. You've got to give lifestyle clients leeway because you can't make their diet strict. Because if it's someone that likes going out the weekend to, you know, socialize or, you know, they like going out for a couple of beers with their mates, um, you can't tell them not to do that because a lifestyle client needs a lifestyle diet plan that is going to fit around their lifestyle, mm. you know, hence the name. So I, yeah, I, I would never be strict, too strict with a client that is just trying to lose a little bit of weight before the summer. Mm. Um, even if they've got a deadline, like a wedding or a holiday, I tend to just give them a little bit of leeway. So I say to them, you can have an off-plan meal once a week still. It's not going to hinder what you're trying to do. It's just mm. not going to be um, as fast. You know, the progress will be delayed. But yeah. you will still get progress. Progress is progress, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, never be too strict with lifestyle clients. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a bit like, so uh, when I work with like um, football players, like professional football players in the past, they, they don't get that luxury. Yeah. <laughs> so like if, they, if we were doing a session, they're going, oh, you know, I, I, I don't really enjoy doing the, sort of the speed, agility, quickness type stuff. It's like, tough. Yeah. <laughs> you're a professional athlete. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we need to work on your speed, your agility, your quickness. Mm -hmm. But if you're working with somebody that just wants to improve their lifestyle, mm -hmm. their health, improve longevity, mm -hmm. reduce all their health risks, etc. You have got a little bit more scope to take in their preferences, haven't you? And, and, and you know, yeah. and be, I, ki be kinder. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the time people will come to me because they've got a, a strict date in mind that they want to get in shape for. Mm. Um, but where people make the mistake is as well is that if you don't have a date and a strict time to be ready for, a, a losing weight is a journey. Yeah, so you, you could take as long as you need to lose weight. There's no strict, if you haven't got like a holiday set or a wedding set date to be ready for, in shape for, then you can diet and, you know, go stop dieting, diet again, lose a little bit more, stop, diet again, lose a bit more. You know, as long as your weight isn't going up when you stopped dieting and it's just maintaining, you could take as long as necessary. You know, you don't have to beat yourself up um, and, and drive yourself into the ground just to get quick results. Yeah. Quick results are just not, it's not about quick results. It's about long lasting results. You know, that's where people make the mistake. You know, people do those crazy diets like Juice Plus or whatever. They will lose a load of weight and then they'll start eating again and then they'll put the weight back on. Mm. You know, it's because they, they were too strict because they wanted that, um, the, 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 the short term um, gain yeah yeah they wanted a quick fix and there's no quick fixes you know it's about being sustainable it's like do you know what is i can't think of anything where that that isn't applicable mm. it's like playing the long game you know they talk about it's a marathon mm. not a sprint etc it can apply to so much mm. even like with finances you know those people that want to make money really really quickly mm. well it's possible but it's also possible to lose a lot of money really really quickly like even the mm. best i mean someone like warren buffett who's like arguably one of the best investment um you know uh, investment dudes there's ever been mm. he puts most of his money in low risk stock mm -hmm. and he's just been doing it for a lot of years and those people that you know they might chuck a load of money into some fund where they get a hundred percent return in the first year which mm -hmm. is crazy they could lose it all the following year um, so it's like everything. If you really want good, sustainable results, yeah, play the long game. Hundred uh, percent. As I said, there's no quick fix. You know, 
and yeah, you might get a quick fix, but then your weight will just <laughs> will just double up, you know. Yeah. Um, because you were trying to take a shortcut. Yeah, you see it all the time. I've mm. experienced that myself. Aggressive, aggressive calorie deficit. So you can mm. ramp up the accountability and mm. tell the world that you're gonna lose weight, and you know you could you could document it on Instagram or mm. TikTok, whatever you want to do. You know, like you think about the guys on. Um, is it Biggest Loser? I don't know if that show's even still on. Right, I remember that, yeah. But you think they're on TV, there's mm-hmm. a cash prize, they've yeah. got all this support, so the accountability and the motivation is as high as you can pos- possibly get. Yeah. But the problem is, when that TV show ends, and they've no longer got the mm-hmm. accountability of everybody watching, and there's no longer the cash prize incentive yeah. and everything else, they just plummet. And a lot of those guys I've, I've read um, is they end up bigger than when they started. Because people are after the... Um instant gratification isn't they mm. so it, the, once you stop looking for that then you're going to be a lot better off in your journey um, you see it all the time you know on especially social media is like the worst place for it you know people want other people to congratulate them you know and they want to lose weight and, and, and coaches as well they, they get a certain label it's like oh this person lost this X amount of weight in this short period of time yeah but what did they have to do for that and how are they now? You know, yeah. they should do an after and an after. <laughs> you know, it's that's a, such a good point. Yeah. Oh, that so, yeah, that, that's a, that'd be a, that'd be quite a cool campaign, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know, they do a before and after photo. Yeah. yeah. And then they go, and this is then five years later. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And if they and if they look the same, then you're like, that's yeah. great. Yeah. It's done um, well, but mm, most of the time they won't. They will just be back to where they were at the beginning, if not worse. You know. It's um, tough for trainers, though, isn't it? Because you are trying to, I mean, this is advertising and marketing, and mm. I don't want to go into that too much because it's, yeah, it's, mm. just, uh, it's, it's not a very interesting subject to talk about marketing, but um, I don't think it is. But um, you, you have to entice the customer or the person to get in touch. And a before and after photo, for a lot of people, if you go, that guy looks a bit like me, actually, the before photo, yeah. and you go, oh, I like the after photo, yeah. it's naturally going to stoke an interest and be mm. like, oh, I want to talk to this person. And if you can showcase a lot of those, people are going to be like, mm. that looks good. But the problem is, us trainers and coaches, we only showcase the good ones, don't we? <laughs> like the best yeah. ones. Mm-hmm. And there's always clients that you'll have over the years that you've, you, you, you've helped them with their exercise. They'll be fitter. They'll be stronger. Mm-hmm. They'll improve their mobility. But from a body composition, a visual composition change point of view, you always got those clients where things didn't change too much because yeah. for whatever reason, they just could not get the nutrition down yeah because that yeah. is the hardest part mm. um but we don't put photos of them up there no this is, this is a this is derek uh yeah. he looked exactly the same 12 weeks yeah. later but you can't measure mobility though can you <laughs> exactly but yeah, yeah you could you could show him this is but this is him doing the splits yeah. <laughs> yeah. <You could laughs> this is him doing uh this is yeah. him joining the royal ballet opera yeah. you know whatever it's called um <laughs> no yeah okay so um so with managing mindset you know, is there anything you do yourself or is it more like an education thing, telling people this is, the, this is what you're going to experience? It is going to be difficult at times. Um, sometimes I do share my experiences with, with clients, you know, because I've, I've been there and still there and walk the walk, you know. Um, but mindset is within you. You know, you, have, you either want it or you don't, mm. you know, and that, that goes with anything in life really, doesn't it? You know, you either want to do it or you don't. Or you can be, you know, sort of in half in, half out and not being sure, you know. Because when it comes down to it, let's talk about dieting. When it comes down to it and you've been dieting for a certain amount of time and things start to get harder, you know, you start to get more tired, cardio, cardio goes up, food goes down and it, it takes some grit to want to see it through, mm. you know. And this is where a lot of people fall off the wagon and they will have a binge you know, and then they'll kick themselves for binging, you know. Uh, but it's, yeah, mindset is something that I, I would say is you either have it or you don't. And circumstances play a big part in that. Mm. Yeah. Your surroundings, the people that you're with, you know. Uh, you could be a really, really, like, strong person mentally that you could be on a prep and your mates could be sitting around you having Papa John's and you could just sit there, you know, completely blasé. <laughs> or you get someone that's not got a strong mindset and they crumble, mm. you know, they're all gone in and have a slice. You know? Yeah, and I guess for those people that 
don't have that strong mindset. Mm. There's still even ways for them, isn't there? Because mm. one of those would be, don't go out with those people. Yeah. <laughs> no, not as in, mm. sorry, I'm not, <laughs> I was listening to that. What are we saying? You can't have friends that eat pizza? What are you talking about? But, yeah. um, but it might be you just don't put yourself in those situations where you know you're going to buckle. Yeah. Because uh, that, if you're um, a recovering alcoholic, then I'm, mm. sh- I'm assuming you're not going to go down the pub with your mates. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you mm. can still have relationships with these people. It doesn't you have can. to be. It's just got to find a way of socialising with them and still being part of the the group, but not taking part in what the group is doing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And do your own thing. Yeah. Sit there with your meal prep or, you know. Um, but yeah, everyone's different. Everyone's different. And, you know, I'm not here to try and tell people how to live their lives. But, um, yeah, you have to have mindset. You have to have it. You have to have it. And it can be built over time, you know. It's like discipline, you know. Not everyone's born with discipline. Mm. It's acquired over a period of time. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah I mean, and obviously, like you, you expressed earlier, you, you've got a... Um, a desire or an interest in mm. and living a disciplined life, um, and I suppose if somebody if that if somebody has had a lot of that in the past, they might repel a bit from it, perhaps, and go, "Oh, I don't, I don't like discipline. You know, I've, I've lived a life like that. I want to be a free spirit now, whatever." Yeah. And then that's absolutely fine. But you'll just have to find something that works for you. Then, if that's the mm. case, if you can't, you know, if you can't be disciplined, yeah, yeah. Um, right. So we well we've talked about diet. We've talked about a bit of mindset. Mm-hmm. Should we get into the the, the, the measly 10% of training <laughs> <laughs> that contributes to hypertrophy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, um, people go to the gym and they will beast themselves for an hour or you know, an hour and a half, two hours, and they will leave the gym and eat what they want, <laughs> you know, and nutrition comes back in, right? But uh, what you do in a gym is a very small percentage of your progress, yeah? So you're, you're literally going to the gym to damage muscle, sweat, yeah? Mm. But the, the, the progress is made outside of the gym, okay? But saying that, you need a structured training plan, you know, to to take to excel you and your goals, mm. you know? Um, just, I see this all, all the time. People go to the gym and they don't have knowledge, they don't have help, and they will just be doing the most randomest things that you ask them, oh, so w- w- what is your goal? Oh, I want to... I want to grow my legs and they're doing upper body four times a week. Do you know what I mean? (laughs) It's just lack of knowledge, really, Mm. you know. Um, But, yeah, training is, um, it it does have its place, but it's not the most important thing. It's not. No. And also, there's so much, there's so many variations of what you can and can't do. So, obviously, there's a lot of wrong ways you can do things, Mm. but there's also a lot of right ways you can do things. I used to be a bit obsessed with... Do, have you ever been on... I don't even know the websites that exist, actually, but there was one called Cut and Jacked and Simply Shredded. Mm, have you ever been on those no, sites? No, if you haven't, there's a chance they're probably not around anymore, mm. but it was... I was going on those websites before social media was mm. a thing. You just used to Google stuff and land on these websites. And um, they were quite similar sites, but they were just full of um, basically stacked and jacked, you know, <laughs> um, men and women, yeah. fitness models, bodybuilders... Mm. And you would you could read about their mindset stuff. Mm. You could read about about the nutrition, but they'd always have their training plans there for you to be able to read. Mm. And um, the thing I noticed very early on is there's so many different ways you can do it. Because some of them would, mm. some of them they'd they'd write about their plan as well and be like quite adamant that this is the way. You know, mm, <laughs> this yeah. is the only way you can Biased, do these things. Yeah. And you're like, well, hang on. <laughs> This guy just a click away yeah. is doing it quite differently to you, and he looks pretty good too, you know. Yeah. And so there obviously is a lot of different ways you can do it. But do you mm. have a preferred method or style of of training for building size? Um, I take recovery very seriously, and this is one thing that a lot of people don't. Uh, as I said earlier, people will literally train six days in a trot, thinking that's going to give them the best results. You know, it's going to get them the biggest. You know, mm. which is not. Recovery is paramount when it comes to building muscle. Um, you can only train as hard as you can recover, right? Have you heard that saying <laughs> Yeah, it's a good one, yeah. yeah. Um, I do... Um, my split at the moment, for example, is a um, back three times a week, and I do legs twice a week, and I do shoulders uh, three times a week because I wanted to grow my shoulders and I wanted to grow my back. I've never had an issue with my legs. Um, I used to be bottom heavy. So I needed to bring my upper body up, which this time round, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go in looking a lot more um, 
in proportion. Mm. Because uh, it's it's a it's a symmetry game, you know. With yeah, being, yeah. So everything's got to be in proportion. Um, but it all depends. I don't have a preferred method of training. Um, well, the split's interesting. So that's that's interesting. So yeah, you do, and yeah. are they on set days? So do you do like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off? How does it work? Yeah. So I will train, for example, back on a Monday. Then I'll do my chest and shoulders on a Tuesday, and I'll do my legs and lats on a Wednesday rest on the Thursday mm -hmm. and then back to uh, doing back on the Friday and then a full body split on a Saturday. Right, okay, do... so that's five days a week. Yeah, yeah. So I do my, uh, on a Saturday I do my legs and my shoulders again um, and that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's, that's a, that is definitely a, a training mm. style because mm -hmm. that, that sounds a little bit familiar. One of the, um, so one of the, the CrossFit models, they talk about different mm. ways of mm. periodizing training in, in CrossFit. Mm. And one of their preferred models is hit it hard for three days because mm -hmm. by the third day, your, your body's already going, mm. oh, can I have a break now, please? Yeah. Then you have a day off. Mm -hmm. Then you'll do two days mm -hmm. because although you'll have a day off and you'll recover somewhat, mm -hmm. you're not recovering from the full three days. So you probably haven't got another three days left in you. Yeah. So you do another two and then you have a day off and, yeah. th and then you can sort of start that, yeah. that week again. But so that kind of fits in with that quite well. So five days on five days, but three on one off, two on one off. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, well, I that... get two, two rest days in there a week at least. Yeah. yeah. Two days. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So that's, well, that's a great take home for anyone mm -hmm. listening is, break up your training with at least two two rest yeah, days yeah and um you're by the sounds of it you've got a very bespoke kind of personalized split as well by the way you, you say you know you i need to do a bit more on my back and yeah um, yeah and it's the, purely because of the bodybuilding now my split will be determined by what i need to work on the most and my weaker points yeah so my weaker muscle groups on my back and my shoulders um and my triceps my but i've never had issue with biceps because i used to be one of those you know guys doing the bro split you know doing <laughs> biceps three times a week and then chest three times a week you know legs i've as i said never had an issue with legs really so i could train them twice a week um there was one point i was training legs three times a week um when i first started uh, bodybuilding properly i was doing them three times a week and then they just <laughs> it just blew up and uh yeah i was Two bottom heavies, and then I had to get my upper body to catch up. But um, a training split should be determined uh, to what the client needs at, at each time. Um, a push pull legs is your, you know, everyday, you know, easy peasy. Yeah. You know, if someone's just starting the gym, it's quite a nice one, isn't it? Yeah. So push pull legs. I know your. Oh yeah. Keep going. <laughs> uh, push pull legs is you know they can do that on a rotation three days on one day off three days on one day off so uh, but when you're getting more um, advanced then you have to be like okay we need to work on this part and that part and you know move the trainer because you can't beat your whole body up every day of the week you mm. know because your body needs to rest as I said so yeah training splits I, I love doing training uh, programs because. It really gets you thinking like this client needs to work on this area and that area. But when it comes to like clients that are just looking to lose weight and gain shape, what I like to do is give them two leg days a week and two back days a week and two arm days a week and one push day a week. Yeah, yeah. okay. So posterior push, legs, back delts and arms. Then they've got three days recovery because when food is low, mm. you need more time, allocate more time for recovery. Right. Okay. That's great. So just to, uh, cause I know we're pushed for time, aren't we? Mm. Um, so the, 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 the training split sounds great. And if someone's new to training, then, well, you know, we, you probably don't need to go complicate things. Like you say, a mm. push pull leg is absolutely fine. We'll do, yeah. do the job. Yeah. It's only when you start wanting to take things to that next level, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. Go, okay. What are your weaknesses? What are your areas mm. of strength and, and tailor it around that. Mm. Um, I imagine from, what you're saying there you know lots of compound movements yeah uh, isolate yeah. the the weaker areas maybe things yeah. that need to catch up yeah so yeah. if you're looking to build definitely focus on your compounds and then have your isolation movements in there as well um but a lot of people don't do enough compound movements and people need to start training their legs more mm -hmm. they just don't train their legs enough mm -hmm. you know uh the biggest muscle group yeah one of the biggest muscle groups in your body that yeah. they need to be trained you know, it's what carries you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then uh, reps and sets, are you the sort of six to 12 kind of range? It depends really, you know, because if a client's looking for strength and three to five, 
you know. But I, for clients that they don't really know what they're doing, I go rep ranges. I, I mix up a little bit of strength and a little bit of hypertrophy as mm. well. Um, so targeting the fast twitching muscle fibers and slow twitching muscle fibers are the two working sets, yeah? So the first working set will be a top set, which can be anything from six to eight reps. Um, and then the, the, the second set is a backup set, which then will be uh, 10 to 15, 12 to 15, 15 to 17. And I tend to do that for majority of my clients um, because we, um, yeah, we, we, we don't, we don't want to give the body too much, but we want to make sure that you're throwing everything at those two sets. And then you've got your warm-up sets as well. So in, t- in total, you're doing four sets yeah. in theory. You know? So you're sort of pyramiding, really, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah mate, I haven't done pyramids for a while, actually. That's, mm. kind of, that's, that's, yeah, that's what I'll be doing today. Yeah. <laughs> Just planted that little seed in my head. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's great, you know. Um, and we work on frequency, you know. So if you're training a body part twice a week, you don't need to be doing 10 to 12 every single set, you know. Mm. You can focus more on doing heavier sets, lighter sets, two sets, Per exercise done mm. you know um thing like um isolation movements you can do three sets the bicep curls tricep extensions you know um but yeah everything else calves now calves is one of my weakest points and i'm hammering my calves now, you know, doing three sets of 10 to 15 twice a week um so yeah yeah do you um i've seen you on the stairmaster i think but do you, do you walk much at all do you go on the do you, do you do a lot of that when? I know this is a bit random. It's, not, it's kind of you're like, what, what's this related? Yeah. To the there is a reason I'm saying it. Yeah. Um, the only reason I say it is because uh, I've been wearing barefoot uh, training mm. shoes for, mm. don't know, must be a few years now. But um, my calves have grown from doing mm. that, um, and uh, I just wondered if there's a, a missing link there for bodybuilders. Like, if you're going to get on that stairmaster, if you're going to yeah. all the, all the, and whenever you're doing any kind of walking or anything, mm. if you want to get your calves to grow, maybe do it in barefoot barefoot shoes. You know, um, so if, okay, but. It might be the, such an insignificant amount of growth for those guys. Yeah, that I it's mean, it's not worth worrying about. Pe- people say that calves are genetic. You know, I don't necessarily agree with that. You know, is um, if you don't have calves, get calves. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, because you Arnie just, was told that, wasn't he? Yeah, you yeah. You just calves. you just have to train calves a little bit harder than the mm. guy that has big calves naturally, anyway. You know, um, so yeah, it's just um, work for it basically, and that's that's what I'm, I'm doing at the moment. That's such a good, uh, that's a nice thing to fi- for finish on there, actually, is mm. um, if you've got something that is underdeveloped or not quite where you want it to be, mm. uh, just work on it harder. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. kind of, more and that's sets, everything, isn't reps. it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's everything, isn't it? Mm. So if you're like, you know, if, if out of all the things you do, if you're a really good athlete, but you're not, you, don't, you feel like you're, you're not quite there intelligence-wise. It's mm. like, well, okay, spend a bit more time reading and yeah. developing the intelligence, and that's your weaker area. But, yeah. Um, yeah, whatever it is, find out what your, your area of development is and just spend m- more volume in it. Yeah. <laughs> there volume. was a saying that is, um, I don't know who said it now, but if you want to get master something, you have to uh, do it for, what was it, 10,000 hours? Oh, 10,000 hours, yeah, yeah 10,000 hour rule, yeah, it's, it's chucked around a lot, that, it's a good, um, it is a good guide, mm. yeah, because even I was listening to Gary Lineker a while back talk mm. about that, and he was saying that, um, uh, is, it, is it a case of just getting 10,000 hours, and he said, no, there's definitely, like, with, with sport, there's, there's, there is such a thing as natural mm. ability, but you can't rely on natural ability alone, you need to also do the 10,000 hour yeah. thing. So, no, yeah. you're right. If you want to be really good at anything, it's mm. what I think what that statement highlights is what you said earlier. You can't skip hard work and consistency. No. You, you, it's just it's part and parcel of it for mm. everyone, isn't it? Whether you're elite or whether you're somebody yeah. that just wants to be a bit better, you still need to work hard. Yeah, there's anything in life, you know, if you're trying to grow a business. You know, you have to be consistent. Mm. You have to be relentless, you know, put in 10,000 hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it should translate to every aspect of your life, really. You know, just, just hard work. Can't beat hard work. No, and it's it's so much more satisfying and rewarding, isn't it, when mm. you're then enjoying the spoils of it? <laughs> yeah. So like when you're, when you're on that stage... Yeah, and you know, yeah, that, it must feel so much better yeah. when you know you, the harder you work, more sacrifice you've made, mm. the better that's going to feel at the end of it. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Brilliant. All right. Well, look, yeah. great to have you on, Lewis. Thanks as always, me. always a pleasure, mate. And uh, well, I'm sure we'll chat again soon. Hundred <laughs> percent. Now, if you enjoyed today's episode, something you can do for me is subscribe to my show. And if you know anyone else that might be interested in this content, then please share it with them too. 
You can also head over to our socials and follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. But if you're ready to take that next step, visit our website www.stormfitnessacademy.co.uk Fill out a contact form, that will come straight to me. I will contact you shortly afterwards and I look forward to speaking to you then.